Greetings, High Flyers! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, I never really got into Robotech as a kid, seeing as how it didn't air on British television to my knowledge, but the tech and the ideas still fascinate me. Which brings me to today's topic, Macross Plus. Released in 1994, Macross Plus is a tale of love, obsession, rivalry, and virtual pop stars. Co-directed by the legendary Shinichiro Watanabe of Cowboy Bebop and Samurai Shampoo fame, this is a feast for the eyes in the classic Macross world. So zip up your flight suit and strap yourself in, because we're breaking the sound barrier with Macross Plus, the movie. It's 2040, and on the world of Eden, two competing teams are testing new fighter jets. The YF-21, as flown by Gold Goa Bowman, and the YF-19, as flown by the Devil May Care Izamu Alva Dyson. So yeah, this movie is Robotech meets Top Gun. An odd mix to be sure, but hey, it works. Meanwhile, Myung Fang Long, former singer, is now directing the tour of virtual idol Sharon Apple. Think Miku Hatsune, but with added hypnosis. Myung, Bowman and Dyson grew up together on Eden, and were great friends. Until the night that changed their lives forever. And now, Myung has returned to promote Sharon's latest concert. And so the night of the concert comes. Dyson and his tech, Won Yang Neumann, have tickets. At the concert, Neumann hacks into Sharon's core, little realising that that core is Myung herself. And when the time comes to get up close and personal, it's Dyson that Sharon goes for. Now there's a cheap thrill. <laughs> the next morning, Dyson is flying a chase camera plane to the YF-21, but he decides he can outfly Bowman. Dyson flies his pants off, and even manages to catch up but the sight of his former friend causes Bowman to lose his mental link, and the YF-21 plummets. That's always the problem with these mental link devices. You lose your cool for one second and they flip out on you. It'd be no good for a fridge or a coffee machine or something like that. At the last minute, Dyson is ordered to save his rival. But oh dear, a stray thought leads to a nasty accident. Nah, just kidding, folks. He makes it, he makes it, he makes it. Seriously, though, he is pretty badly beat up afterwards. Two days later, after an injured Dyson regains consciousness, he takes Myung out on a day trip. But Gold is waiting, and when they return, battle commences. But in trying to stop this pointless fight, Myung gets tagged by a stray fist and collapses, bearing her soul. Sharon has been requisitioned to perform at the 30th anniversary of the end of the Space War, and so Myung leaves for Earth. But oh dear, the top-secret Ghost X-9 fighter trumps both designs. And so the fighter projects are cancelled. As if that was going to stop Dyson anyway. And so Dyson heads to Earth, to put a spanner in the debut of the Ghost X-9. But Bowman was sent after Dyson, and in the skies over Earth, the two stage a final battle. And the truth about that night is finally revealed. So what really happened between them? The truth is that Gold Goa Bowman is responsible for all of his own misery, having found Dyson and Myung alone together, and struck out in jealous rage. Ashamed of himself, Bowman repressed these memories. Until now. But shock! Dyson's alive! And the two old friends reconcile. But oh dear, a Sharon-controlled Ghost X-9 is heading right for them. The YF-19 goes to rescue Myung, while the YF-21 battles the Ghost X-9. Sharon reveals the truth to Myung, who can only watch as Bowman makes the ultimate sacrifice. Ladies and gentlemen, a moment for Gold Goer Bowman.
Alright, that's enough of that then. Onward! And worse, Sharon has made her way into the YF-19 systems and gives Dyson a glimpse of the distant sky. But when all looks lost, Myung's singing brings Dyson out of hypnosis. And so our movie ends with the destruction of the SDF-1's core and the reunion of Myung and Dyson. So that was Macross Plus. And you know something? I'm going to put this one into the House of Love. At 114 minutes, this is no aperitif, but a rich meal of idealism, determination, and staying true to yourself. I could argue that the songs are hokey, and the emotional mess that is Myung does tend to grate, but this is beside the point. The message here is that you can't make emotion in a lab, or in a vacuum. And as the dedications read, this one's for future pioneers. So thanks for watching, and the last word goes to my former self. I'll be back very soon with more fun and frolics. So long, folks!